Hey guys, this is John Adamson, the Rehab and Documentation Guru, and today we're going to talk about rate of perceived exertion, also known as the modified Borg scale. Just to give you a little bit of background. First of all, the Borg scale was originally designed to correlate breathlessness with predicted heart rate, and so the original Borg is a 6 to 20 scale. And then what you would do is you'd take the number the patient gave you and times it by 10, and supposedly that would give you a rough correlation with the patient's heart rate. However, that numbering system is generally difficult for people to wrap their heads around, and so the modified Borg scale, or RPE scale, 0 to 10 was developed to correspond basically with the levels of dyspnea that the Borg uh, represented. So when you're using a 0 to 10 scale for breathlessness, first of all, do not call it the Borg because it's not the Borg, it's the modified Borg. Um, secondly, a lot of people don't know how to utilize the Borg scale. So let me give you some perspective on this. Uh, one of the things that you've heard me advocate is making sure that therapists take cardiopulmonary measurements because generally we tend to ignore those things and when you're talking about patients that have reduced endurance or activity tolerance, in general what we are talking about is cardiopulmonary performance measures. The other thing that we need to consider, and this is especially important if you work with the geriatric population, is the fact that most patients who are geriatric who become patients because of unhealthy lifestyles are probably going to be on heart medicines of some sort. And a lot of those heart medicines will reduce some of the response to exercise that you would normally see. So whether it's a heart rate response, a blood pressure response, etc., the those parameters, heart rate and blood pressure, may be, be becoming unusable for determining how hard somebody is actually working. And so RPE, or the modified Borg scale, becomes that much more important. So how do you use the modified Borg scale? Well, first of all, I always consider it, regardless of the type of patient, but when I have a cardiac patient on cardiac meds, it'll often become one of my default measures. I will also measure blood pressure and heart rate response, but if those aren't showing me something and the patient's pooping out during an activity, I know they're working hard. So I usually start off with how breathless are you from zero to 10? Now they might say, well, I'm not really out of breath. So then I go into, well, how hard are you working from zero to 10? Figuring out ways to modify the way you say the statement. Kind of like when you ask people if they have pain, they say, well, I'm not really in pain, but I'm sore. Okay, from zero to 10, what is your soreness? Um, so figure out ways to modify the rate of perceived exertion scale question you're asking to try to get the appropriate response. And for that particular patient, that therefore becomes the default question that you ask. Now, how do you use, as a clinical um, perspective, how do you use the rate of perceived exertion scale? Well, it's pretty simple, and there's various charts on Google and, and Google Images that are RPE scales, and here's the general rule of thumb. Anybody that's at a five out of 10 or higher is going to be working hard and very hard. And this is gonna generally correlate with the anaerobic level of activity. Now you cannot maintain anaerobic activity for long at all. You're not getting enough oxygen to your, uh, to your muscles to metabolize energy for those muscles doing what they're doing. And so they're going into, um, they're going into non-aerobic means of generating um, energy and that's going to produce acids. And of course we've all heard of lactic acid and therefore the patient is going to become breathless because your body cannot handle being acidic for long. It, it, you end up being in, be basically in a state of metabolic acidosis and so the body has got to restore normal pH. So you're going to start breathing extremely heavily to try to make up for that oxygen deprivation that the muscles are struggling with. So how would you use the RPE scale with activities? Well, simple. If you're working on aerobic conditioning of your patient or activities of daily living or mobility or whatever it might be, you want to keep that patient at a level of about 2 to 3 out of 10, maybe 4 out of 10 if you're doing truly training 
and that's about it. You don't want them to be working any harder than that because now you're going to be moving into anaerobic metabolism. They're not going to maintain it. Here's an example. You have a COPD patient with 6 out of 10 rate of perceived exertion with an activity. Now, the activity here is not important. What's important is the patient is in anaerobic metabolism. What we need the patient to do as a goal is to have less than or equal to 4 out of 10, which will, in general, place the patient at a, an aerobic level of activity, allowing them to complete that activity and safely, too, because uh, there is a safety element involved generally with a lot of the patients we, you, we uh, are treating. So anyway, I hope you have found this little tutorial helpful on how to use rate of perceived exertion or modified Borg scale uh, for not only um, treatment parameters but also goals. If you have any comments, please uh, put them below. Please like and subscribe uh, because that helps the YouTube algorithm help people find my videos. And as always, this is John Adamson, the rehab and documentation guru helping you, hopefully, to get paid for what you do. Take care and God bless.